It's the second week of September and we're starting to feel spring. Our daytime temperatures are now creeping into the low 20s range and it feels so good. Last week I was doing a bit of a parody with my money method but this time I'm going to show you actual propagation. In this case I'm going to deal with some of my older Echeveria, the more mature ones. Some of them are getting quite leggy which means that they are due for a head chop. Apart from that a lot of them have been growing some pops underneath and I haven't been pulling them out because of winter. Turn around, Zach. Backwards. Go back. Turn, turn, turn. Go there and go there. Run, run, run. Hello, Zach. Hello, Zachy. Bye, Zachy. But now that it's spring and it's their growing season, they're starting to actively grow. It's a perfect time to separate the pops now. It just made space for me to stand on. Well, sit on. So this is the space where I placed all of my mature echeverias. And as you can see here, there's quite a few. That some of them are in pots. Having them in pots in this case would be such an advantage especially given what I'm planning to do with them shortly. I think rather than trying to explain to you what I'm planning to do, it would be easier if I just show you. I'm leaving this Dick's Pink in here because I don't think it's leggy enough yet to be reset. So, it's got another growing season to live. <laughs> so here are my leggy and mature Echeveria. This is an Echeveria Pastel. Big Red. Blondie. I bought this as Red Sails but this is not Red Sails. I think, I'm thinking this is a Red Sapphire or a Red Trump. Leaning more towards a Red Sapphire. But we'll see. I think I still have one more. And this last one is an Echeveria Haronculata. Now removing those pots left me with a bunch of holes and there's a risk of them collapsing especially if I leave them unattended for quite a while and if you've done any sort of resetting or beheading of echeverias you would know that the whole process takes a while usually months so it would be a long time before I could get the rosettes back here in order to prevent collapse I would need to plug these holes and this is how I normally do it I keep extra pots of the same size, just in case. And this is the just in case now. Now let's talk about the process of resetting. What is it and why is it necessary? Well, first off, I have to mention that I was Originally thinking of chopping these plants back in autumn or I think it was early winter But I decided against it because they were going dormant But now that the days are getting warmer, they are starting to actively grow And you can see that if you look at the centers of the rosettes It is bright green rather than just red like this big red Well, I can't say with this blonde because it's green all year round This red sapphire here has a green in the middle a lot of my other plants are doing that as well. So 
Echeverias are winter dormant. They are actively growing during the warmer months. This makes springtime the perfect time to do resets. Now going back to the question of why is it necessary, there are a few reasons why you would do that. The first reason would be it's a matter of personal preference. So this part is very subjective. Some people, myself included, prefer seeing Echeverias as just rosettes. We don't like seeing bare stems looks so weird it looks like a turkey's neck or something so resetting the head by chopping it off removing it from the stem allows us to keep it short and keep the compact rosette shape and for most people that's more than enough reason to do it the second reason is a matter of health as echeverias age the stems grow weak especially if it's too long I've seen some people who try propping up the stem Tying it around the stake or something. Hi, Isa. Where was I? Yeah. Second reason, leggy plants have a higher tendency to fall over, bend. When the stems bend, they get thinner and weak. And they constrict so much that eventually it is not enough to support the weight of the head. When that happens, the stem tends to break off or just fall over and they would be quite deformed as they grow. So chopping them off and resetting the head prevents that from happening. Then there's a third reason. This reason is the most compelling reason why people do this. Because many Echeveria, especially the larger ones like this, they are mostly solitary and that means that they only have one head. They sometimes grow offsets but not as often as some of the smaller types. The only effective way to propagate them is by forcing offsets to grow along the stem and you can do that by chopping off the head. Now how does that work? Chopping off the head means that you're removing the apical meristem. The apical meristem is the growing point at the very tip of the stem, the top one. And by removing this, you're activating all of the other growing points. These are called the lateral meristems. Let me get another plant just to give you a better idea. So again, there are two growing points. The first one would be right at the tip. And you'll notice that new leaves come out from here, from the center. And the other growing points would be all around the stem. And in the case of rosette forming plants like this, the lateral meristems are found where the leaf node used to connect to the stem. So all of this little eye-like thing is here. And normally, the apical meristem, this one right here at the very tip, this is dominant. But if you remove it, the rest become activated. They are no longer relying on the main, on the apical meristem to, for the plant to grow. And that means in order to survive, the plant will have try to push out more plants from the sides. It's pretty much just the plant trying to live on by creating pups, you know? I think it's kind of like a survival strategy. Now before we resume, let me show you some of the head chops that I did last late autumn, sometime in May. And here they are now. This is an Echeveria Arly right? And this is an embossed gem. One here at the back, this is a Barbillion. And they are growing lots of pups now. I think this one just started pushing out pups a few days ago, maybe three or four days ago. So it hasn't been that long yet, but thanks to the warm weather that we're getting, the pups are growing at a fast rate. I'm not expecting this to be large enough to be plucked by summer, but who knows? They might get a good run this time. Another thing worth pointing out is that in the lateral meristems, or pretty much any meristem or any growing point, roots also come out from those. So if you're not going to leave enough the meristem for roots, then some of those growing points would be pushing out roots, while the rest would be offsets. And whether or not they produce roots would depend on whether the current roots that it has is still healthy enough to support the plant. And at least what I notice is that part of the stem that's underneath, underground, or not receiving light, would likely develop some roots instead of pups in food for thought.
another thing that people would often ask when doing resets like this is is there any sort of preparation that I should do before doing this I would say yes I think the best way to prepare your plants for any head chops is to water them a day or so beforehand you know just make them plump make sure that the head isn't floppy so make sure it is really firm just make sure that the leaves are not dehydrated it should not be shriveled and the reason for that is when you chop off the head you're cutting off its access to the roots which means that there's no way for it to get water through the stem so you'll want to send it off with lots of water beforehand it has been raining for the past few days and lucky we have a, we're going to have a very bright weekend it's currently Saturday as I'm filming this. So all of these plants are happy. So it's worth to make sure that they receive enough water before even starting. And if you are going to do this, make sure that if you're going to water them now, don't chop them immediately after. Maybe give them a day or two to absorb all of the water, plump up. Just make sure that they are not dehydrated and do the chop after that. So give them a bit of time to bulk up. Let the chopping commence. So the next step from here is to grab your cutting implement. I have this. This used to be one of the knives in the kitchen, but it became a dedicated gardening tool for me now. We have a replacement cleaver in there already. Most people would go all the way and disinfect this before using. I should be doing that, but I can't be bothered because it takes time and my method works for me anyway, so far. But the idea behind disinfecting, of course, to get rid of microbes which could infect the cuts because once you chop the stems the cuts would be exposed to open air and of course microbes some plants might be more sensitive than others so it's totally up to you if it makes you sleep better at night then do it in my case i can't be bothered so how do i go about this i just spray a jet of water on this then wipe it until it gets completely dry Let's go do that. The next step is to find a place to work on and I like using this table so I'm going to clear it now. I'm after getting the most number of pups and the best chance to do that is to chop as high as I can go because I also want to keep the, the main head so I'll chop as high as I can go to the lower leaves, maybe around here. That would expose a lot of the lateral meristems. And hopefully, lots of pops would come out. You could check out this other video explaining where to chop and how to chop. But to summarize, the location or how high up you chop affects the outcome. When doing this, I tend to try leaving at least one or two leaves on the stump. That ensures that I am chopping high enough that the remaining stem would still be healthy. And at the same time, having a leaf means that it could still photosynthesize just in case. But I've seen people who do it under all of the leaves, leaving no leaf at all on the stump. In fact, my previous ones have no leaves, so it still works. So I just think this might be giving me a better chance, especially now that it is actively growing. So, yeah, look at that. It's clean. Now what to do with the head? I'm going to leave it somewhere dry, somewhere it won't get wet. The goal is to have this cut dry out completely, callus over. And the way that I would usually do it is to grab one of my pots and just lay it in here. Just let it sit that way. So make sure the pot is smaller than the rosette, otherwise it will just fall down into the pot. I'm not yet going to plant this and I'm going to leave it drying out this way until I can verify that it is growing roots underneath. So it would be staying here indefinitely. Historically, during spring and summer, it has taken me, the fastest it has taken me was about two or three weeks before it started pushing out roots. But a better estimate 
would be, especially for this one, maybe it might take me at least a month, especially since it's not yet consistently warm. We still have cold nights. We're still too early into spring anyway, so yeah. I would be expecting this to grow maybe October. I'll be leaving this in bright shade away from direct sunlight because it is stressed right now. I think stress saying it is stressed is an understatement. It just lost its head, you know? <laughs> so both of this would be sitting in bright shade for the meantime. Time to work on the other plants. some directions to get to you as a side note something that you really should be doing is to label the stumps because without the head it's hard to identify them sometimes this one is a pastel so I'm leaving the tag right here I'll have to do it for the previous one as well it was the caronculata and I'll label it now. This is interesting. This one seems to be pot bound because as you can see the roots are coming out from the bottom. I'll deal with this at a separate time. For now I'll just be focusing on chopping off the head. And it seems like there's lots of pops underneath already. So by removing the head, these pops would be better off in terms of growth because they would be focusing all of the growth into growing these pops. They'll be getting a boost. I think about you, for you my love. Since this one has lots of pops, there's no pressure for me to cut above the lowest leaves because this little pops could provide nutrients to the main stem anyway. At least that's what I think. Now would you look at that? There's a lot of pops. I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 at least nine of them there's still a few more smaller ones i think that are starting to grow out of the merry stem this is pretty good And here's all the beheaded echeverias and their stumps. There's one more thing that I have to do before I can consider them done. And that's removing the flower stalks. Now why do I have to do that? It's because flower and seed production takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy from the plant. So I would like the energy to be focused on just growing the plant, growing the roots, rather than being directed towards seed production, seed within the flowers. And a way to do that is simply to take off the flower stalks. Using my secateurs, I just have to chop them off. When chopping off flower stalks, make sure not to throw them away immediately because you could still use the leaves for propagation. This is better than pulling leaves from the plant itself because you're just going to make your plant smaller. 
Now here's what you should do with flower stalks. So take each stem, check the leaves, make sure that they are clean because sometimes the leaves harbor a lot of insects. I better get a second container. Okay, two containers now. I'll be cleaning up the leaves and place them here. Make sure to pluck the leaves properly. Remove it cleanly from the node, the entire leaf. And the way to do that is to apply pressure to the base. Don't pull it from the tip. Apply pressure to the base. And depending on the type of leaves, you could just push right here, push sideways. See how easy that went? So I'll do the same here. Push sideways. There. So that's how you remove leaves from flower stalks. The leaves on this stalk seems to be a bit old. I'm not confident that I'll be getting pops from these, but you know, it's free to try. So I'll just grab them anyway. Wow, that big red had lots of leaves. <laughs> You can see me pausing once in a while looking at the leaves. I'm just making sure there are no insects on it and kill the ones that I find. This one has a bit of insects on the flowers themselves, so I'm just I'm not going to take too much too close to the flowers. Now this video is about propagating my mature Echeveria, but you might have noticed that I didn't pull these two out. The reason being, this one doesn't seem leggy enough. Same with this. But I've noticed that both of them have pups growing underneath. And it is my opinion that these pups are big enough now, so I better pull them out. Like with the leaves, just push them from side to side. It's the same principle as harvesting imbricata, and I've shown you that in previous episodes. So let's do that. If you do it properly, the pups will just come off easily, as long as you don't break the stem. You just have to remove them from the node. It appears that these two are the only ones big enough to be harvested. I'm going to leave the rest alone. There's still a few pups underneath, but they are still too young. By keeping them on, I'm allowing them to take nutrients from this parent plant, and they would grow a lot faster than if I let them grow on their own roots. I'm just removing the dead leaves underneath to ensure more airflow. Can't even see what I'm doing. I'm just doing this by touch. Just feeling around for dry leaves. I have to do the same for this Dex Pink. There's one pup here. It's growing on the long stem. Part of me is thinking of keeping it on for now. I guess I'll keep it in. Now these two curls pups are big enough to be placed in their own pot. I'll be moving them here. I don't have to wait for them to callus because I removed it cleanly from the node. I didn't break off the stem. So there's no, there's no part of the stem, the internals, to be exposed. This means that the whole thing is pretty dry and I can just simply plant it now. And as an added bonus, since I since I pulled it out from the node, you can, you can see this little strand here. This is, these are actually roots. So it's pretty much all set on its own. I'm just checking the other one. It has no roots yet, but at least the end is pretty dry. No worries there. No worries about rot. I won't have to be worried about stem rot. So let's cut them up. As for the leaves, they need to go in shade. I need to keep them away from direct sun exposure or else they will dry out, they will burn. And I'm placing them on the top shelf because from that position, it would be unlikely for them to get wet when I hose down this area. And right now, they don't need to be watered. Let's plant is approaching one year, its first anniversary since it started last year. 
And to celebrate, I've started moving old episodes of Let's Plant into Facebook. You can now watch Let's Plant from either YouTube or Facebook. It comes out on YouTube on the usual time, that's Tuesday morning my time or Monday evening Eastern time, and two days later on Facebook. Special thanks to my Patreon sponsors at Oscarino, Judy Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Camila Arvayas, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, and everyone else who pledge on Patreon. You are good people. If you like this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, make sure to hit like and follow my page. That way, you won't miss out on future episodes of Let's Plant. And finally, you can check out my Instagram, that's at Siriska Page, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!